What up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gen Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me, as always, is Mr. Brian Schultz. Star Wars. Brian sent me a article that was a very long article talking about, I guess, the revival of Star Wars and all the behind-the-scenes conversations and uh, how to re- uh, reinvigorate the enthusiasm of fans towards the Star Wars um, IP. Very interesting details that were given in that article. It was a variety article, right? Um, I'll, put, I'll try to put it. Uh, it I think it was yeah. a variety. Yeah. I'll put it in the description. It's a variety or Vanity Fair, but yeah. Very ah, yeah, it's yeah, like yeah, a, yeah. It's vanity. I think it's vanity. Yeah, um, okay, yeah, yeah. I um, I'll put in the in the yeah, it's vanity fair. I'll put it in the description um, below. Um, but what I found interesting, Brian, is the kind of person that they were looking for. Well, the kind of people that it's that that's required in order to make something like this work. And John Favreau, I don't think he even signed the contract. He was started. He started working on, it. right? And how she got Dave Filoni and John Favreau in a room together, talking about what they wanted to do, um, having disagreements, and ultimately um, resolving it to make the Mandalorian. Um, Brian Johnson, oh, they talked about a bunch of stuff. Brian, what did you think about this um, very well written uh, article um, regarding, I guess, um, trying to rebuild the excitement around Star Wars again? Um, what, what, what were your thoughts on it? I think you have to segment the article into the movie side and the TV side, because that's really where the franchise is trying to redefine itself. Um, but it's a great behind the scenes look at a lot of things. Um, and they gave a lot, it seems like they gave a lot more uh, intel to Vanity Fair than they typically do. Actually, for, for, the, for the technical nerds out there, I thought the stuff, they gave a lot of details about the volume. Which oh, yes. Is, uh, the set where they shoot the Mandalorian, but... I think it has broad ramifications because it talks about how much faster and more efficient you can make a show versus a film using that technology. And then you can just sort of in the back of your mind, be like, all right, now that you can see how Disney's like porting that into their plans to bring yeah. these shows to life much faster. Yeah. Uh, so it's a gr I think that's really interesting stuff, but I thought the couple of things that were, I think Kathy can't, or long rumors, which I think were, were interesting, was kind of like the state of the film franchise. Uh, I, I love your reaction. We, we really don't sound all that close on a lot of stuff. So we got the confirmation that Ryan Johnson's trilogy is pretty much gone, right? So it's kind of sitting on the shelf beside the Benioff and Weiss Star Wars trilogy <laughs> that never happened. Yeah. Um, because, I mean, Kathy Kenny makes a comment in the article, like, well, Ryan Johnson's off doing Knives Out stuff for Netflix now. You know, and it's kind of like whatever story he was going to tell is probably never going to get going to get written. You know, the Patty Jenkins rogue squadron quote in there is pretty ambiguous, right? She's like, Oh, hopefully we see it at some point. It didn't really lead you to believe it. that's the kind of forum where you would give something definitive about, Hey, we're writing it right now. Yeah. No, nothing. Just like, eh, it's out there in the future. Even the Kevin Feige star Wars, which Michael Waldron has said he has started to write. Kathleen Kennedy's quote in this article was kind of like, I'm just kind of interested to see what he does with it. Kind of implying like they don't, like she doesn't, like th 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 there's nothing really concrete or like necessarily a firm storyline or anything they're going to do there. So it just left me feeling like the, the Star Wars as a theater enterprise, this reboot's going to take longer than we probably thought. Like, we're just not going to see really anything going up on screen, maybe even until 2024, 2025. Like, it just seems like we're not that close to an yeah. actual true 
Star Wars movie. Like, what's your thought? What's your thought on like how long? You know, Rise of Skywalker left people with a lot of negative mojo, bad taste in the mouth. What do you think is the right amount of time to wait for Star Wars to reboot and come back as a theatrical phenomenon? I don't think a lot of time is needed in order to introduce a Star Wars. I think the right path towards the future of the Star Wars franchise is what's required. Um, if you presented me with a script and the Star Wars script is dope, then let's go. Let's get going. We don't need to wait. I mean, how long does it take to make this film? Probably not that long now that they got the volume. <laughs> but um you know because they make the yo what they show you in the mandalorian and, and boba fett and all that stuff all that stuff looks top shelf yeah. um i think if you give us a start off start us off with a, a great film brian then we can move forward from there um my only concern is, are you at a place where you need to bring in somebody like George Lucas if you wanted to? Let's have a conversation about the future of Star Wars and uh, have Dave Filoni and John Favreau all in the room trying to write this thing out, make, make a concerted effort to revive um, this 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 franchise in the in, in the theaters. I think you put you what was needed is a great script, obviously, right? Um, but I think the the people like Dave Filoni, George Lucas, if he were to offer his assistance or consultation on 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 the story or his thoughts on it, I think those are valuable conversations to have. Um, I don't think much is needed other than that. So if we bring in the TV shows now, are there any of those shows that you wish were being made as movies instead of limited series? I mean, Obi-Wan Kenobi is obviously one that that is a no-brainer, right? If you if you decided if you did a film and you did this. Obi Wan Kenobi, Darth Vader, I mean, Young Luke it has all the symptoms of a of a great movie there, but they're doing it this way, which I don't mind. But I think the next movie that they do should either be um, moving forward from the Skywalkers and. Yeah. I, I, just I'm not interested in prequels nice little I'm not interested in none of that you know if 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 Disney wanted to do their Lord of the Rings or, and stuff like that then yeah do Old Republic and, and, and compete with them guys and doing what and doing that stuff right do that because there's Lord of the Rings and what else the Hobbit um the Lord of the Rings well there's like if you're talking about Tolkien stuff there's like the Silmarillion there's all the second age earlier stuff that Amazon is using Doing, okay. um, or some of it they have access to and some of it they don't and um, then you have a, but, and then you have hbo max doing um the prequel game of thrones yes the yeah. game of thrones stuff if you want to do nice with old republic and disney wanted to compete in that area with them then do that right that makes a little bit more sense to me than doing a movie and i don't want to see that let's go forward how do you go forward that's very difficult i get it but it's a tall order, but I think it's something that is worth exploring instead of going toward in the past. I'm not interested in the past anymore. Yeah, like I, I've talked about it several times, but I think it's the, the, it's the issue is the Skywalker family to me. It's you have you have to find ways to break up break away from them, or if you're going to reconnect, do it the way. Obi-Wan seems to be doing it, which is you're going to bring back Vader at a point in the storyline that there will be real interest to see what's happened. 
And I think the interviews with Hayden Christensen, now that he's out doing, has me interested. So, mm -hmm. and this article actually talks about it. So we, we got some answers probably to what we've been asking. So Hayden Christensen will be the one in the suit. That's confirmed now. Okay. So he's going to do the physical performance. Um, there's also a shot in the oh. last trailer where your, th where your theory about the heads-up display might be getting warmer. Because if you okay. look, there's a shot of the mask going on and you see the what looks to be like a display in the eye hole. Got it. Okay. So, I so heard anyway, his this voice, article kind of confirmed a little bit. I, I heard his voice sounds... It's deep, man. Yeah. His voice is like a bass voice now. I mean, he, he sounds much closer to James Earl Jones than you probably would have thought possible when you watched Attack of the Clones. Wow. So I don't know if it's going to be... It, it made me believe that you could probably edit his voice in a way that it would sound like Darth Vader so he could give the vocal performance himself. Interesting. Um, so that article confirmed, this article confirmed some of those details. Um, this article also gives you some details about some of the other shows, which I think is interesting. I don't know what your reaction was. I think the Andor paragraph is got me. I mean, I'm, I'm so high on that show, but it sounds like the stakes are going to be really excited. Like this idea of like the empire terrorizing his home world and sort of him learning to kind of rise up and fight against that. And I, I mean, that's, you know, that's bread and butter type stuff, but I, I just, it sounds really cool. Like, it sounds like that could be a pretty fun ride. Um, uh, and then you sent me an article too, but there's a reference to what John Watts is doing in the Star Wars universe. You want to, I don't know if you want to talk about that one, but I, that one also I thought sounded very much like it could be, um, feel very pure Star Wars to me. Um, I actually, I, I, I sent you, was it a picture of it? I don't, I don't know if it was a, um, what, yeah, what, what, he's what's basically he doing on? the kid Star Wars. Well, it's basically the kid Star Wars. It's sort of like if you cross E.T. with Star Wars, it's like he's looking to cast young kind of child actors in sort of a, in a, in a Star Wars universe type show. And we know that John Watts from the Spider-Man work, he works, he, he's able to extract pretty good performances from a young cast. And so I saw this and I was like, you know, the DNA of, of Star Wars through the years, a lot of times has revolved around kids, you know, being able to connect with kids. You know, even yeah, I don't know if you remember, like back in the '80s, they they had a couple of those TV movies with the Ewoks. Do you remember those, like the Ewoks, the movie, and like the Battle for yeah, Endor, yeah, and like yeah, those look. I mean, those look cheesy now, but like at the time, like for kids, that was kind of like a cool, cool thing. So when I saw that I, in this article, and you sent me the link to the kind of the picture that as it kind of word got out, I was like, oh, that makes a lot of sense. Like that actually mm -hmm. be a really good Star Wars product. Um, yeah, I don't really think too one, much about it. I wasn't it, but... clear. Was that a series or a movie? I don't. I, I think it's, it's a like series. It also a series, right? Yeah. So. Um, one thing that I, that stood out in that article when they knew they had something is when they asked James Cameron to come check it out. Oh yeah, <laughs> but that's again with the volume, right? That's cool. They fooled that's, James yeah. Cameron on a VFX. Yeah, yeah, that's that's because now they have three. They have one in London, one in LA, and yep. one somewhere somewhere else. So they're they're really expanding that 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 tech um, for creating their their IP. Um, but what are your thoughts, Brian, on that possibility of of asking George Lucas to to participate? I don't think it's a possibility, but. Uh... Uh... Yeah, I think there, you know, I gotta be honest, I think there's some, there's probably some ill will there, to be honest, the way that ended, you know, in terms of his treatments for seven, eight, nine, I mean, granted, he got his, he got his money, but I mean, I think from a creative standpoint, he had his views of seven, eight, nine, he didn't like what they did with Force Awakens, you know, I would never say never, but I, part of me almost feels like if Kathleen Kennedy's the one in charge, I don't know that he's going to want to come back. I think it would probably be, she would have to, you know, we've had discussions as to whether how long she's going to stay, but you know, if she was to step aside, could, you know, like a Favreau and Filoni, if they were to ascend, could they bring him back? Maybe, but like, you know, Lucas is also, let's be honest, like he's hit or miss when it comes yeah. to this type of stuff. You know, he, he's had some of the most brilliant ideas in, you know, in movie history. He's also had some terrible missteps, yeah. 
you know, so I, you know, with him, it's, you, you never know. Um, so I think it's more, I almost, you know, I almost want more like, more newer storytelling. Like I, I know that's the what I'm Johnson saying. Stuff is controversial, uh-huh. but I kind of like that. You know, I kind of like that he tried something a little different, even if it didn't totally make it. Like I, I would have wanted to see what Benny Off and Weiss had to offer. Like those are creative guys. Like Game of Thrones is, you know, how they adapted that is, is, you know, one of the great pillars of sci-fi culture in the last 10 years. Like I'm, I'm sad they didn't get to carry an idea forward. So I kind of would more vote for a little bit of a new, a new shaman, if that's what they're going to, going to do. Yeah. Um, so we have a, a, a Shoka that's going to be starting next year, correct? Filming now. Filming now. She's that, that Rosario Dawson confirmed they've started filming that. I think I think the show's going to be has a chance to be outstanding. That's also another show that could have been a movie. That 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 character is not enough to have handed that kind of audience. You think Darth Vader would have would have would have would appear? Well, I think he is going to appear. So that is not confirmed in this article. They left that vague uh, mm-hmm. because there's a reference to Rosario Dawson retweeting a Hayden Christensen participation in the series, and Disney getting mad at her over that. I think he's in it. I don't think you could do an Ashoka show without some reference to her. Yeah, 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 yeah. Feature. Yeah. I'm just curious as to what form, given the time period, how they're gonna how they're gonna pull that off. Um, but I mean, I gotta be honest, like I, if I look at the lineup of, you know, Obi-Wan and or Ashoka, Mando season three, uh, and this watch show, and then I don't really know what to make of the acolyte that's kind of out there a little bit for me, but like, uh, I'm kind of more excited about the Star Wars TV lineup than I am about the Marvel TV lineup X, like secret okay. invasion. Right, like I don't. I, I think, like, you know, I listen, not, and, and not to move too far off the Star Wars thing, but if Secret Invasion is a disappointment, Brian, that's gonna be a problem for me. <laughs> that's gonna be a big problem. But that's really the only. But that, I mean, like, without confirmation of anything like a Daredevil season four, like without true confirmation, we think it's happening, but without true confirmation. That's the only Marvel show that's on the board right now that I would say is like, I guess that in Loki season two, those would be the two things where you're like, all right, that's appointment viewing. The other shows is kind of like more of a show me story. I think with these, at least like there's a lot of hype behind the characters and the, and the story telling things we've seen already, things we should see. So I don't know. I mean, Star Wars, Star Wars as a TV enterprise is, is really picking up. I mean, we know Star Trek is obviously dominated tv in terms of you know its its identity but i did think it was interesting i don't know what your reaction was they talk about solo the movie in that article and kathy mm-hmm. kennedy says something really interesting where she basically says like we learned our lesson about recasting characters like han solo i, I kind of took that to mean like you're never going to see that again you're never going to see them try to take an iconic character and put a younger, fresher actor into the same role. Well, the only instance that will probably work is Sebastian Stan taking over as Luke. I was just about to say, I guess that's true. That is true. The exception to the rule, but. The problem, I think uh, some of the problem with that solo film, it was, was just too soon, just too soon. Because most people say that that movie wasn't bad. It's not bad. But it, what I'm saying is, it was just it's too not great, soon. But it's not bad. Yeah, but it was too soon. I mean, we just saw the dude die, like, you know what I'm saying, a few weeks ago. Yeah. You know, <laughs> give us some time. Give us some time, you know. And, 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 but I think that was the problem with that. That, um, and, and and apparently. The guy, I mean, he hasn't gotten an acting gig. Has he gotten an acting gig after that? No, that it, he has, but like he popped up in a TV show recently. But his, his, I have to say, I feel bad for him because I feel like it, in the production of that movie, there were so many rumors about how poorly he was doing. Remember, there was an article about like, oh, they, 
they they tried to bring in an acting coach, and it's like That's he never crazy. had a chance, man. Like he was doomed before they even went out. Like because if you watch his performance, you're like, I see him trying to get some of the ticks of Harrison Ford. Like actually, you see it. But like with all the bad pub that was going on about him before the movie came out, it kind of was like, I just don't know how he's going to overcome this, and he, and he didn't. Yeah. So I mean, the ir- the other irony of that that whole statement is we're about to see Obi-Wan Kenobi and you and McGregor did it. He's the younger version of Alec Guinness and he nailed it. Yeah. And he has this, you know, every, to find someone who thinks he did a bad job or is a bad <laughs> Obi-Wan. Nobody. So it's weird yeah. that Kathy Kennedy's like sworn this off because of Solo when she's just about to put out a show, which literally was we recast the same part with a, a legendary actor in Alec Guinness who played Obi-Wan Kenobi, and we put Ewan McGregor in the role, and it worked great. <laughs> yeah. The, the, uh, a, it was too soon, and, you know, I would have been more interested in, in a Mando, not Mando, um, a Lando Calrissian movie, because we don't really know too much about the guy. We just saw, we just saw him in, like, what, two films? Um, so that would have been more interesting. We weren't really that connected to um, Billy D. Williams's Lando Calrissian. He was a, a memorable character, but you know, seeing a younger version of him, that would have been more interesting to me than seeing a solo um, character. So, uh, well, it's funny you say that because I think like the the, the original trilogy, the only like. The event that's referenced is the card game where the ship changes hands, right? Yeah. That, but you're right. You know, we look at what's happening in the Obi Wan series. They're basically using one line that Vader utters in A New Hope as grounds to to, to anchor a whole series of adventures. There's this no movie they couldn't have done the same. This movie doesn't happen without that line. <laughs> I mean, so, this series doesn't happen without no, that line. Yeah. Yeah, but there's no reason why they couldn't have made Han and Lando more of a tag team for a series of adventures. Like Empire Strikes Back, the, the dialogue leaves the room for that. Yeah, yeah. It indicates the history without really giving you any constraints on what that history yeah. was. So they wrote a story where Lando is a supporting character, but he's not really part of the main adventure that much. And maybe that was a mistake, especially considering yeah. Donald Glover is... Speaking of recast actors, it's pretty good as a young yeah. Billy D. Williams. Basically. Yeah, yeah. It's uh, I, 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 listen. I think the future of Star Wars is is is, is uh, has me very excited for 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 what's to come. Obi Wan comes out what next week? World Day weekend. And two episodes, I, yeah. And hey, I've been saying, Brian, that this is going to be an event every week. This is the this we're going to be looking forward to seeing this show. Um, I'm excited for it. Very much excited for it. I think the future of Star Wars is 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 is, is in good hands. Um, but in in general, I think this IP is 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 gonna is is gonna do well because John Favreau, his work ethic and his uh, I guess love for the 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 IP as well as Filoni, um, you know I I feel as confident as I do with Kevin Feige and the MCU being in his hands as as the Star Wars being in those guys' hands. You know, part of what I, I've enjoyed about the build up to Obi Wan is, is you know, we 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 just got done with Kevin Feige complaining about the trailer showing too much of Doc Strange too. I think they've done an excellent job in Obi Wan at not showing you what you came to see. Exactly. Ewan McGregor has done very very little physically in these promotions. You have not seen a single lightsaber duel. You've seen. The red saber's out, but you've never seen a duel. You haven't seen a single shot of Darth Vader. You haven't heard anything other than his breath. All of the material we're waiting to see 
is still under wraps. And that is the way yeah, you do it. be teased. A show, a movie, that's how you do it. And um, I can't wait. I can't wait. Um, is there anything else you want to discuss before we sign off? No, I think that's it. I would just say like this, you know, this article is a long read, but it's a worthwhile read. If you have any interest in Star Wars, there's a lot of behind the scenes minutia we didn't cover. Like we try to touch on the stuff for the rumor mill for the shows and the movies, but it's really worth the time. So I, I highly recommend and probably going to link the article. But, you know, if you're into Star yeah. Wars, it's, it is. It, and it does. I think it will make you excited as a Star Wars fan about, you know, what is coming because it, it, they are changing directions a little bit for how the franchise is going to go and it does seem like they've learned some things by what happened with things like solo and rise of skywalker so hopefully we get our jedi academy that's the only prequel i wish to see sebastian stan yeah, and skywalker um again i think the future of star wars is in the future and not in the past um if you're going to do prequel then obviously you know what I said previously is, you know, compete with the Lord of the Rings and Game of Thrones series that they're doing on those other uh, platforms. And they're spending a hell of a lot of money to do it. And I believe that old uh, Knights of the Old Republic would probably um, need that sort of uh, financial backing in order to, to make that show look amazing. Uh, you know, yeah. it's funny you mentioned Sebastian Stan. I didn't want to digress, but one of the reasons I actually would want to see it too is because we have we have, we have, we've gradually retconned the kind of lightsaber skills of all of the leading Jedi in Star Wars, except for Luke, right? So Vader kind of got his moment in Rogue One. We got to see him cut loose. I think we're going to see it again in this show, but we got that moment. You know, Alec Guinness, we make fun of him a little bit, but look, I mean, he was his, he was the age he was in 1977. He did the best he could. I'm not going to throw any shade at Alec Guinness, but Hugh McGregor restored the fate because when he went up against Darth Maul and then went up against Hayden Christensen, those duels are really cool. So you get to see like Obi-Wan doing his thing. Alec McGinnis um, and Darth Vader was like watching Tyson and Roy Jones Jr. <laughs> on Triller. <laughs> <laughs> so my point is that Luke Skywalker hasn't really, didn't really get that moment until the season finale of Mandalorian. But then we kind of got sidetracked by the CGI on, on the face. And it's like, I think if you get... Having watched Sebastian Stan and his stunt double, let's credit the stuntman, having watched Sebastian Stan be the Winter Soldier and the way he can fight in those movies, let's give Luke a moment where he can go all out. Yeah, and I man. think that's, that's worth it to any Star Wars fan. Of course, of course. That, 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 that's something I would love to see because um, Luke hasn't had his uh, moment to shine other than that last... Um, um, episode in The Mandalorian where when he makes his arrival and he does what he does and everybody's just like, you had dudes crying. You know, so... Um, it's cool, and, but I will say no duel in that. That's him carving up bad guys, yeah, but he does yeah, not yeah. have the Maul versus Obi-Wan, the Anakin versus Obi-Wan. He doesn't have the one-on-one -on -one yeah, at yeah, that yeah. level that I like him to have yeah. once before we leave him. Yeah, 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 I agree 100%. Let us know in the comment section below after you read this uh, article. If you get a chance, read it. It's a pretty long read, but it's well worth it if you're definitely a Star Wars fan um, to see how they're thinking about um, the franchise, what they're attempting to do, um, what, are so, some, what are some of the things that they were thinking about when they decided to move forward with, with their current um, shows that are going to be coming out. Very interesting read. Um, but let, let us know in the comment section below what a, what is your excitement towards Star Wars, where do you think it's heading, and do you believe is is like, you know, I was saying that the future of Star Wars is in the future and where we go from, from here after the Skywalkers. I think we're pretty much done with the Skywalkers. Um, sure, they can have their connections to it, but we need to move forward. Um, yeah, let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of that. Um, Brian, any last words? 
No, let's just let's get Obi Wan going. We'll we'll do our recap and start talking about it. I can't wait. Yeah, me too. Um, that's our show for today. Hit that like and subscribe button, that notification bell, share with share with your friends, and uh, we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. <laughs>